everyone, my name is Edie Summers and I'm going to read from my book um, for Bedfest. Um, I was in bed for six months and I, I did have CFS um, and my book is about my experience with it. And I was recommended by a good friend of uh, this community to do this. Even though I'm not in bed now, um, I do know what the experience is like. So I'm reading from my book. It's called The Memory of Health. Can you see that? And I'm just going to read some of the passages from there. And um, I kind of had an idea that I kind of call it when you feel like you can't move. It's I call it the unmovable hour. So not only does it feel like you physically can't move, but it also feels like the hour and the day never moves either. And that's kind of what it feels like to be in bed. So again, I was in bed for six months and I'm just going to read some of the passages from my book. So I literally felt trapped in my body. It was the final straw for me. And thus I entered the worst six months of my life. My inflammation called cellular inflammation or chronic inflammation was so bad. I was literally mostly bed bound. For at least six months, I more or less lay in bed, much of it in total darkness, with nothing but my thoughts about the excruciating state my body was in to keep me company. I did watch TV or get online for maybe half an hour at a time, a few times during the day, but for the most part, I could not tolerate lights, radiation from the TV, computers, the radio, etc. My nervous system was completely shot. It was beyond shot. My body began behaving in ways that you normally couldn't imagine. I couldn't sit most of the time because the level of inflammation in my body was so bad. And again, imagine cement right before it dries. This used to be how my knee was before surgery. That's what, that's how I developed chronic fatigue. Now this was how my whole body was and even worse. I'm just gonna flip to another page. So um, one thing I write in there is that some of my, when, when I was at my sickest, I was the most alone. And I have to say that my biggest fear when I developed chronic fatigue was, and, and health challenges was being judged by other people. And um, I, and even though that has been the experience in a lot of cases, um, I think it's also important not to judge ourselves and to not allow those, that type of energy in because um, it makes a big difference, I think, in terms of how we feel. So um, so, um, I also had uh, a moment one day when I felt so sick, I felt like I was slowly dying, lying on my bed, unable to do anything. And here is where actually I had kind of a, a really beautiful moment, um, despite all of this thing that was happening. I felt a strong sense of intuition that what matters in this life is the connection we have with one another. Nothing else really matters. Love and relationships are what you will think about and remember when it really counts. I felt this as a flash of insight I was receiving from whatever you wish to call, whether it's source or something else. It was a profound moment and I will never forget it. So I have to say that even though we do, I think, fear a lot of judgment, we also need connection more than anything. So that's why I think it's so important to seek connection um, no matter what state you're in, especially if you're bed bound. Um, find connection, positive connection anywhere you can. And I'm just going to read a little bit more from the beginning of my book. Um, Dear friend, if you have faced illness, then you are, in my eyes, a hero or heroine. There is little more daunting than the horizon of suffering. Um, the odds are likely that you're reading this book because you have some type of health or other challenge, or you know someone else who is seeking answers. You may be searching for a glimmer of hope that this current storyline will end. I wish I could tell you that you will find everything you are seeking in these pages. It's entirely possible that you will. It's also possible that your journey may continue beyond what you read here. In any case, I offer this, this wish to carry with you along your path. Whatever else happens, keep reaching for your goal of feeling better. Whatever challenges you may be facing, it can feel like a lonely road. We often have to wander off the path to find what it is we truly seek. This is both a terrifying and ultimately liberating experience. While it can be daunting to face a challenge, health or beyond, it is also an opportunity to wake up to the bright light of awareness. Know that there is support, even in the most unlikely of places, and know that you are not alone. Use any judgment to build a shield around you as you head toward the light. Whatever you do, don't give up. You are closer than you believe, and as you believe, you shall set yourself free. And I really believe in being well in mind, um, regardless of what challenges our physical body 
hands us. Um, thanks for listening. Bye.